Hey guys, welcome back. In the third lesson of the official Bolt series, we're going to set up jumping for our character controller. Now to get started doing this, let's first think about what we have to do. So we're actually controlling the left and right movement by using the rigid body set velocity. That allows us to pass in a vector two based on our input for the horizontal axis. But for the Y value, we're simply setting it to be whatever the current rigid body 2D's velocity on the Y is. So we're not controlling that yet. And the reason we did this is so that the physics engine can take over and do whatever it needs to do against gravity or if we in fact were to add force on the Y axis to imitate a jump. So what I want to do is do exactly that on the Y axis, so the vertical axis, I want to add force to my character to push it up in the Y direction. And we can do that very easily if I come over here and hit, hit shift space to open up the full screen. So we're going to add force on the Y to our rigid body. So I'm going to add a unit called add force for rigid body 2D. And this allows me to pass in a vector for X and Y being the amount of force that we add in which direction. And the type of force we're going to add for force mode will be impulse. That's like an immediate, just a snap of force. And the direction I'm going to add it in, we can simply say 0 on the X and 10 on the Y. That's the amount of jump force we'll have. We'll see how that is. And what I want to do is I want to fire this off whenever the jump button is pressed. So I just want to fire off of an event whenever the jump button is pressed. Luckily for us, I can add a unit called on button input and this allows me to type in a name of a button and then which action I'm looking for so we're looking for the down action whenever the button is pressed down and the name of the button is whatever it is in the input manager for unity so by default we have a jump button called jump in unity so I'm going to type that in jump there we go now I'm just going to pass the flow from this event whenever this is fired off directly into the add force so whenever this event happens we will add force on the Y by the amount of 10 with the force mode of impulse. Let's try this out. So if I hit the space bar, my character jumps. That was pretty easy, right? So that's pretty cool. If I move, I can jump. Oh, and then I fell to the ground. But if I keep hitting space bar, I can just keep on jumping. There's nothing stopping me from jumping once I'm already in the air. We don't care if we're on the ground or not at this point. I want to make sure that I can only jump if I am in fact on the ground. And there are a few ways we can do this. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to send what's called a ray from the center of my character downwards. And I want to check to see if it comes in contact with a platform. If it does, I should be considered on the ground. If it does not, then I am in the air. So if it does find a platform below me, then I know I can jump. So we're going to send down this collision check from the center of the player and hope to hit a platform. If we do not, then we are in fact in the air. So I'm going to add a unit that is called circle cast. Now, if you are familiar with a ray cast, this is very similar to that, but we can add a radius to it to kind of thicken up the ray. So it's not just a single little line. And I'm going to use the one that has the origin, radius, direction, distance, and layer mask. So I'm going to add that unit. And now there's a ton of options here, but they're very easy to understand. So origin is the starting position of this circle cast. So where does the ray start? And my origin is in fact going to start at the player's position, right? So the player's position, wherever he is in the world. So to do that, I'm going to make a new vector two right here. And I'm going to pass in get position. And I want to get the transform position of this object. So in this case of the player, and that'll give me the X and Y position of our player. Now the radius is the thickness of the ray. So if we think about casting a single line down, from the player's center downwards, we can think about how thick the line is from left to right. So what kind of area below the player does it check for a platform? So in my case, I'll use about half a unit, maybe about 0.4, and that's just going off of the character size and how much space I want to detect a platform below the character from the left to the right. And for the direction, we know we want it to go down. So on the Y axis, positive is up, negative is down. So if I just send it in the negative one direction, then it'll be going downwards. And that's exactly what I want. And distance is how far from the starting point it will travel. And in my case, we're going to go a unit down to get to the bottom of the character. And then I want to go a bit further so we can detect just a bit below the character. So one unit down plus we'll say 0.1. So 1.1 units down. So 
If the character is two units, one unit in the center down will get to the bottom of the character, and then point one will come a bit further down so we can detect if there's any platforms below the character. And now for layer mask, that helps us decide which collisions we care about. So if we're looking just for platforms, I can say I only care about objects that are on the platform layer. And that's what we care about, just the platform. So I'm gonna drag this out, and I could add in a bit mask number right here, but what we're gonna do is a bit easier. I'm just gonna drag this out, and I'm gonna get the layer mask literal, which gives me a drop down here that allows me to select which layer that I have to find already in Unity, which layer I wanna check for, so platforms. Now, if I click on my platform here, I see that I have it assigned the layer of platforms. Pretty cool, so now we have a check that goes below the player to see if it finds a platform. Oops, and I did not, I added multiple there. So there we go. So now that we're sending out this circle cast, I have to know if it found something. I have to know what it found. I need to know what information it has to know what to do with it. So what I'm gonna do is drag out from this target here. It's actually the hit object of this ray. So it's gonna tell me what it hit and I have all the information available to me if I go to Raycast Hit 2D, and then I say Expose Raycast Hit 2D. That gives me all the options available for the Raycast Hit 2D. Lots of options here that I don't necessarily need for this. All I care about at the moment is what collider it hit, or if in fact it hit a collider. I don't even care which collider it hit. If it hit a collider on the platform layer, I know that I should be able to jump. So I'm gonna drag this out, and what I wanna do is I wanna see if the collider is null. If it is null, then I did not hit anything. If it is not null, then I did hit something. So I'm gonna say not equal. That allows me to say if this is not equal to something. And what I wanna know is it not equal to null. Null is just empty, null is nothing. So if it is not equal to null, then I'm on the ground. So now whatever I put from here, this bool will be true if I'm on the ground and false if I am not. And that's great, it's exactly what I need. So now that I have that information, what I can do is decide if I am allowed to jump based on this true or false. And as you probably guessed, I can use that with a branch to decide where the flow goes based on the result. So I'm gonna right click on this event output for the flow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a branching unit here. So I'm gonna type in branch. And as you remember, this allows me to control the direction of the flow based on the result of a bool. So I'm gonna pass this in, and if I am hitting the ground, then I should be allowed to jump. There we go. Pass the flow from the event whenever it is fired off into this, and if I am in fact on the ground, then I can jump. If I am not, then I don't care. So let's see what happens. So now I hit the space bar, and I jump. So I know that I'm allowed to jump at the moment, but if I hit the space bar multiple times, I don't keep jumping. Pretty cool. I can only jump once I hit the platform again. So I can jump over here, jump over here, jump back, oh, and I fail. So that's pretty cool, but instead of actually inputting the amount of jump force into the vector directly just like this, I wanna add a variable that will allow me to assign it as we have other variables in the graph. So what I wanna do is hit shift space, come back out here, and I'm gonna add an object variable. I'm gonna call it jump. Name of the variable, it's fine. And it's gonna be a float value. It's gonna be probably about 10 as well. That seemed to work pretty good for the amount of jump force that I apply. So now what I wanna do is I want to assign this as the Y force on this vector. So as we know to do that, I have to create a vector too. We've done this before. And I wanna pass it in as the Y value for my vector too. So I'm gonna go hook this up here. There we go. And now for the Y value, I won't jump. So what I'm gonna do is click and drag this variable from the variables editor over here right into my graph. And that adds the variable unit, just like that. And then pass it in as the Y amount. There we go. And now that I added this to the prefab, I wanna make sure I apply it so it happens in all of my scenes. So hit space, and I can still jump just fine. So if I look at the player's animator, I can see that I have a state for jump and it comes from any state. So the transition says, I can go to jump from any state if grounded is false. So if the parameter grounded is in fact false. And then from jump back to idle, if you guessed it, grounded is true. So what I wanna do is when I jump, I wanna set grounded to be false. And when I land, I wanna set grounded to be true. Luckily for us, 
we have this value that says if I am grounded or not. So all I have to do is pass that in to our animator. So let's move this out of the way. I'm just going to select and drag to grab all these units that, that decides if I'm on the ground. And I'm going to hit Control C and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to hit Control V to paste it. So with this, what I can do is I can pass it directly in to our set bool for the animator. And I want to set the bool for grounded to be the value of this calculation. So now if I am on the ground, I will have the idle state. If I'm in the air, I will have the jump state. So now what I want to do is hook this into the flow. So I want to take all this and move it out of the way for now. Just select it and drag it and move it. So I'm going to take this and move it up a bit. And then drag this straight into the flow from our other animator, just like that. Now let's see what happens. So if I jump, notice I go into the jump state, just like that. When I land, I go back into the idle state. Very cool. But as I'm sure you know, this is messy, right? We have this exact same setup repeated twice. And the one thing we should not be doing whenever we're programming is repeating ourselves. There's no reason to do that. So what I want to do is I want to be able to take this and use it multiple times in multiple places. Because if I were to say, want to change the circle cast values, I would have to change it in two places. If I wanted to change the layers I check for, I would have to change it in two places. And that's no fun. So what I want to do is I want to create what's called a super unit from this set of units. And it's just as cool as it sounds. So back into the editor here, what I'm going to do is in my macros folder, I am going to create under bolt a flow macro. Now, as I said at the, in the beginning, a macro is a reusable graph. You can reuse it elsewhere. So what we're going to do is create another reusable graph. I'm going to call this ground check. And what I'm going to do is go from player controller and I'm going to take all of this ground check code that we have, the code responsible for checking for the ground. I'm going to hit control C once more, go into ground check, and I'm going to paste it. And what I can do just to clean this up is get rid of this ground check and this ground check. That's because we're going to use our super unit in place of all of that mess. And we'll see how that works here in just a second. So in here, I now have my ground check. And what I can do is I can actually add this as a single unit to my other graphs. So if I go to the player controller, I can take this ground check and drag it and drop it in my player controller graph. And I now have a super unit called ground check. Pretty cool. But I want to get the value from this. I want the result of the ground check. Am I on the ground or not? And I have no nodes available to me for that to actually drag it into the value for my set bool. So what I have to do is I have to output the value from this super unit. And it's very easy to do. I want to create another unit here and it's called output. And what I want output to do is I want it to take the value that I calculate from this and output it to the super unit so we have a node to actually grab the value from. So for this, I have to go to value outputs and I'm gonna add one. And I wanna add a type of bool as that is the value that we're working with here. I wanna add a bool. And for this to work, I have to add a key. It's the backend value that it uses to recognize this value. And I want to call it grounded. And I can also add a label if the label is different than the key. And I can add a summary. So this is the summary, right? And you can see down here, whenever you select this node anywhere in any other graph, you'll see what they do and what they are. Pretty cool. So let's take the value of this not equal and hook it up to our output node. Just like that. So now back in our player controller graph, this unit has a grounded value output and all I have to do is take it drag it into my value node for the set bool and also you guessed it did the exact same thing for branch so grab ground check drag it out there we are so now that big mess of units turned into this very clean easy to read super unit and we're using the exact same graph in two separate locations and I could use it as many times as I want right I could just drag it wherever I'd like if I have to know if I'm grounded for anything else, anywhere in my game, I have that ability right here. And what I would like to do is add my new animation setup here to my current animator group. So I can just drag the edge over just like that. Then I'll add a group for the jump. 
there we are. Very cool. And here's all we have to have a very simple but effective character controller. It's very simple to do in Bolt. And in the next lesson, we're going to actually add the death mechanic so that whenever we fall on these spikes down here, our poor little guy will die. That's the next lesson, guys. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.